Somebody say to worship, to worship you I live, to worship you I live, to worship you. To worship you, I live. Just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord. Somebody open up your mouths and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a reason to give God thanks. Hallelujah. We have a reason to give God praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Our God is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 There's a song that's in my spirit. My God is awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome, he's awesome. Awesome, uh, my God is my God is awesome. He can move mountains in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is. My God is awesome, broken, forever, my God is, my God is awesome, somebody say he's awesome, he's awesome, he's awesome. He's awesome. He's all aw my God is. My God is awesome. Savior of the whole. Hallelujah. Salvation. Hallelujah. My God is awesome, forgiven, praise is holy, just say my God is, my God is, somebody declare that he's awesome in his presence, he's awesome. He's awesome. He is awesome. My God is. My God is awesome. Somebody just put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
He is awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning again. Good morning and good afternoon. Maybe you are somewhere else um, watching us live. Um, we say good afternoon to you. I know if you are in Nigeria or Kenya, it is afternoon now for you. So God bless you. I also want to take the opportunity to welcome back. I haven't seen her for a while, but I know she's been going through some stuff. But we have been praying for you, mother. Stand, mother. Stand and let us, yeah, welcome mother back in the, in the house. We bless God for you. We bless God for you, Mother, and listen, know this, I have been praying for you. Amen. I have been praying for you because you are one of us, amen? amen? Well, I pray for you whether you weren't one of us, but you're one of us, so I have been praying for you as well. So we bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Anyone excited for what God is going to do? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, 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 listen. I tell you, I see these two times of prayer and intercession that we have been spending with the Lord as a ministry. Listen, we have seen his hand, amen? amen. And we're believing God that he's going to continue to do great, great and marvelous things, amen? amen. One of the things I love about us is our culture. We're all so different. Um, and though we are different, we are able to still worship together. Amen? Yes. I abs Maybe it's because I just came from Nigeria, but Amavi, I absolutely yes. love yes. those prayer points this morning. So nobody prays for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but you just hit the nail on the head. Amen. And that's how Africans do it. And I truly have been enjoying. So thank you, Amavi, for doing it the way you know, and God is still glorified. Amen? Amen. So please, every time you are invited here, you don't, don't feel that you're conformed to do it the way we do things, right? It's whatever you believe the Lord is leading you to do it, as long as it gives glory to Almighty God. Amen? Amen. We won't take the mic from you and say, no, that's not how it's done. That, that will never happen here unless you're preaching blasphemy. Okay? Then I'll take the mic from you without a shadow of a doubt. Amen? But apart from that, um, we encourage each and every one of you, amen, to hold on to your culture. Yes, you're in a new country, but hold on to your culture because we still serve one God. Amen. amen. Thank you, Sister Tara, for agreeing with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we started this series, um, How to Access the Power and the Glory of God. And I must say, this series has been pulling me. It really has been pulling me in my, in my research, Sister Katie, in my, in my just spending time with God and understanding that even some things that I thought I knew, I recognized, or even if I knew it, I wasn't doing it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, Jesus. Uh -oh. You didn't think Pastor was going to tell on himself, did you? Listen, I tell you, you, you need to understand. I, I always tell pastors when I have to talk to them, um, the pastor that you should follow is a pastor that's transparent. It's one that he will let you know honestly what he himself is going through. But as, I, as I've been, been, been reading and researching, and my research, I'll tell you, is not from any material. It's all from the Word of God. It's all from the Word of God. So everything that I give to you, it is coming from Scripture. Hallelujah. So can we just bless the Lord one more time for His Word, how to access the power of God. Father... We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is already blessed. We thank you, almighty God, that even as I stand before you, Father, that the people will see you and not me. But, Father, I pray at the same time that I'll be able, Lord God, to, to share exactly what you have downloaded to me. Father, I ask, Lord, that you will break up this word into pieces. And, Father, that every ear... Lord God, every spirit, Father, that will hear this word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth will connect to you. We bless your name. We exalt and worship you now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. As I said, last week we started this series and we established a few things. It's not okay to be preaching, reading the word, or even fasting 
um, with priors without the manifested power and experience in the glory of God. Amen. We saw that many people in scripture, and I'm doing a recap. Many people in scripture, they followed Jesus as well as they followed the apostles because not just of the word, but because of the wonders, the signs, and of the miracles they did. Amen. We established strongly, and I have to say strongly, that we at KB, we are not interested in the power of man. Amen. Nor is the series about parading men or women of God um, to look more special than we really are. This series is to unlock the truth of scriptures. Amen. To help us to walk the way Jesus walked when he was on earth. We establish, and again, I'm still just doing a recap, that every time after Jesus or the apostles spoke the word of truth, which is the gospel, it was followed up with what? Signs, wonders, and miracles. We asked the question of each and every one of us last week, where is your power? Hallelujah. If you're showing me your Jesus, you should show me your power. Can, can I release this though in this recap? Jesus is the power. Jesus is the power. And the Holy Spirit is the glory. Jesus is the power. And the Holy Spirit is the glory. If you don't believe me, by the end of the series, we will, we will see that. <coughs> the power of God are miracle signs and wonders. And the power of God, these miracle signs and wonders, they cannot be explained by natural elements. That's what we are considering as signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? Now, now let me share something with you, Tara. Let me, me share something with you, Pastor Cash. And let me pause, Pastor Cash. We bless you in your presence, woman of God. We honor you and we thank God for the work that he's doing in your life. Amen? So, so, so let me explain something. Or I want you to explain something to me, Margaret. God became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us by natural elements. Can anybody explain that? God became flesh. The Bible said, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can you explain that by natural elements? No, you can't. We sound nervous. Why? It shows you that that is what? Power. And who became flesh? God became flesh. And who came? Jesus. So who is the power? Jesus. You have to understand me. Follow me, church. We emphasized last week that there are certain um, characteristics that disqualify us from manifesting the power of God. Now, church, please rewatch the sermon. It's on YouTube and it is on Facebook. Let me jump into what the Lord wants to um, do this morning. Now, there are various keys. In other words, there are many keys to access the power and the glory of God. And, and I won't be able, as a matter of fact, I don't know all the keys. I don't know all the keys. But, but, but I, I want us to understand that there are no limits, Noah, to Jesus. Jesus is limitless. In other words, apostle does not have all the answers. Pastor does not have all the answers. As anointed as you are, you do not have all the answers. Because God is what? Limitless. He has no end. Amen? But in studying scripture, we can identify what I call patterns. That were followed and the results of following those patterns were the manifestation of the power and the experience of what? The glory of God. Now, I'll be moving from scripture to scripture. Fiona, you're going to have to help me along with Jacob. Um, we're trying to get them up, but after a while it went. But we'll try to see. I also encourage you, take some notes. Whether it's mentally or physically, take some notes. Now, the Old Testament shows us many 
of God's servant displaying his power and experiencing his glory. There, therefore, if you are, and this is not for you, this is for somebody online. If you are only a New Testament Christian, you will have difficulty with this series. Did you know that there are some Christians that are only New Testament? You will have difficulty with this series, but I encourage you, take my number and give me a call. We'll talk. If you're only an Old Testament Christian, you too will have, will have trouble with this series. Amen? Why? I need you to understand that my God, the King of Kings, the one that I serve, you can't put him in a box. He transcends age. He transcends time. He is yesterday, today, and when? Forevermore. Isaiah, if you don't understand, check Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. I will read this one. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. We all know that. Neither are your ways what? My ways declare the Lord. Why? For the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than what? Your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. First key. Key number one. Show me your cross. Key number one. Show me your cross. Somebody's wanting cross. Okay, let, 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 let me word it different. Let me word it different. Uh, Stick Haiti, show me your death certificate. Ooh, Jesus. Key number one. Show me your death certificate. Pastor, what? Galatians 2, 18 to 20. Now I need reader. Galatians 2, 18 to 20. You found it yet, my friend? Galatians 2, 18 to 20. Somebody read that for me. You know my version, right? NLT. ESV is good. Jacob, have it up. Father, I am a sinner. If I rebuilt the old system of law, I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. Everybody open your ears and listen to verse 20. Uh, my old self has been crucified. Has been what? Crucified. Somebody tell your neighbor, crucified. Crucified. Continue. Not my word. Your first key has to be your death certificate. Wow. If you're alive, you have no power. Or we will learn if you're alive, the power that you have is not God's. It's actually man's power. Hallelujah. Church, listen. Only those who are dead to self will be able to access the power of God. If you are not now, you need to follow this. If you are recognizable to others, the power that you carry is man's power. If the traits the world sees in you are those of the world, then the power you possess is man's power. Therefore, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm also selfish. Whatever miracle you think you did, it's not you. It's, it's a matter of fact, it's not God. It's your own doing. The only way God can use you is if you die to self. Because each and every one of us were born in what? Sin. So no matter how you, you think you have arrived, unless you deny yourself and follow who? Christ. In, in other words, help me Lord, help me, help me, help me. Man's power points man Lucy to me. 
God's power, even though you might see me do it, it points others to Christ. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. L listen to what he says. I'll read this one. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up what? Your own way. I I'm, I'm, I'm preaching Bible. You must give up your own way. You must take up your what daily? Your cross. And follow me. Now, let me help somebody. Everywhere you see a cross, it signifies what? Death. Have you ever seen, have you ever just taken up the paper? You may just want to read the newspaper and you turn to the death column. You know what you see? A cross. Everywhere you see a cross, it tells you that something died. Have you died? Or are you still living in you? But yet, you are searching for power. Where is your death certificate? Follow me, church. Peter went to work. And at the end of his ship, Fiona, guess what? He was coming home with nothing. He was a master of his trade. But at the end of his shift, he was tired. Why? Because he toiled all night and got what? Nothing. He was disappointed. He couldn't believe it. Because he was what? A master of his trade. <laughs> he caught nothing. But here comes Jesus. About to test Peter. I wonder, and in my head, and, and I picture Margaret Jesus saying to Peter before, are you ready to die? Oh, I'm not sure if the church gets it. He went out all day, all night, catch nothing. He was a master fisherman, but he catch nothing. Here comes uh, Sister Amavi, and a man who does not fish, that says to him, I know you were out all night. But throw your nets again. In other words, Sister Katie, it's a test of Peter. Are you ready to die to self? Are you ready even though you believe you know what to do? I, God, I'm going to show you that I have all the power. So listen to the test. <coughs> Peter, are you ready to drop pride? And allow a non-fisherman to show you up. Oh, oh my God. I, I, I pray the church is getting me. Peter, are you ready to drop your pride? And allow a non-fisherman to show you up. See, many of us, we won't die to self. Because our pride won't allow us. Our pride won't allow us. We are afraid to be wrong. Can I, can I tell the church something? It is okay to be wrong. The only perfect man was Jesus. Can I say something else? It is also okay to be vulnerable church, but with the right crowd. You see, we have been taught that you can't be vulnerable. You have to always be strong. Listen, if you, all, if you are always strong, then sometimes you're going to fake your strength. Because even at some point, Jesus needed Christ, needed God, the Father. Even Jesus was hungry. Even Jesus was thirsty. Oh, how are you? I'm okay. That's for a different time. Church, it is okay to have a shortcomings. As long as it's not years of the same shortcomings. Oh, Jesus. You see? The church likes to hear things like that. Oh, I have shortcomings. Um, but there's another part. You can't be struggling with the same thing for years. So, so maybe I have a shortcoming now. So, so, so back then, um, I was an angry person. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the Holy Spirit. 
today. I ain't, I ain't that angry at all. Some of you, I, I, I thank God you didn't meet me back then. Because you would have liked Sister Tara or Jesus. It's okay to have your shortcomings. But it can't be the same thing for years and years and years and years as following you. At some point, as a child of God, it has to stop. It has to stop. Amen? So, Peter, Peter actually followed Jesus' command to throw his net out again. It, it, it is in your death, church, you will encounter Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, it is in your death, rather, you will encounter Jesus and the power that he promised us. Now, Peter's evidence of dying to self is Luke 5, verse 5b. But if you say so, I will let my net down again. In other words, uh, Jesus, uh, it doesn't look like it's possible, but if you say so. Lord, if you tell me to go, if you tell me to leave the job, I will leave the job. Lord, if you tell me to leave the country, I will leave the country. Oh, God. Lord, if you tell me that it's going to happen at this point, oh, that is what I'll do. Lord, when I look, it doesn't look like it's going to work. But if you say so, I will do it. That is the evidence that you have died. That's your death certificate. Your death certificate is your obedience. Your obedience to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not your death, not your death certificate to your feelings. I feel that like this is what God wants me to do. <clears throat> I pray that the church will get to a place. That we will say, but if you say so. No, I wonder if. But because you say so, God, I will do it. Be firm in what God has spoken. You remember the three Hebrew boy? I'm online, but, but, but follow me. Uh, I got a word from my family in Nigeria. And I shared it with them. Uh, and I said to them, I can't see it, but God has said it. And things have gotten worse, but God has said it. Uh, I don't have a church that understands me. I, I might not be able to see that, that the door is open. But, but can I tell you. I, I, I don't walk by my sight. I, I am walking by faith. At the church of God. We need to stop walking by, fight, by sight. Uh, mother listen. You don't have to hear the doctor say it. You have to just believe. That God says it is done. I might not see it, but if you say so, we will do it. Church, after that, Peter was no longer a fisherman. He was now fishers of men. There was a young man that he was zealous in his purpose. He had people hiding from him. Uh, uh, people left their safe community, their comfort place, uh, because this young man was determined to seize and punish all of them if they didn't agree with him. He actually stood over the first martyr Christian with an awe of pleasure on his face. But get what? He too had to die to self. 
You know why? Because he came face to face. Face to face with the one who he persecuted. You remember this? Who are you? The answer, I am Jesus, the one you persecute. The, the encounter that Paul had led to blindness and, and then full submission. Can I tell you, some of us, Christ might have to blind us in order for us to submit. There are some of us, there are some things that are delayed because we refuse to submit to God. I, don't, I, I didn't come here to trouble her, but I'm going to trouble her. Do you think this single should have only been released in 2024? She made a post. She said, I finally answered the call. <laughs> finally. What, what does that tell you? <laughs> God has been pulling for a while. Now, let her tell you everything she went through in order to finally say yes. But can you imagine if we say yes from the get-go? Oh, there are so many scars that we will not have. But apparently, we love to look at our scars. We're a set of people, uh, Katie, instead of just saying yes, we say, okay, God. Maybe. And then he gives us a nudge. Ah, he leaves pain there. Somebody disrespects us. But God, why, 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 why was I disrespected? Maybe because you were in the wrong place. Maybe because I told you to leave. Oh, oh, oh I know all about that. <laughs> Do you know how many times God says, Edgar, leave? But, but leave? Oh my God, this looks so good. There's a nice church. There's, there's, uh, let, me not, let me not go there. But leave. I, I'm not ready yet. Okay. They're going to tell lies on you. God, God, why did they tell lie on me? Because you were there. Like David Lucy. Mm. He was a king that was supposed to be where in battle, but he was on where? It's Varanda looking out. What happened? He got himself in trouble. Church, just say yes. <coughs> Sorry. Paul was no longer the prosecutor. He was now the restorer of hope to people. But, but guess what? <laughs> His submission put him in chains. <laughs> Where is your cross? Where is your death certificate? I need somebody to agree with this or disagree with this. Listen, it's the official death cert of somebody physically that can allow the access of burial to happen. It is the death certificate that can release their will. So why are we still alive? Church. There's a blessing. There's a power. There's a glory of God that awaits us. But he's waiting on us to die. You cannot get the stuff that I've worked for until I die physically. Because why? I put it in a will for you. Those guys who bury people, they cannot put you in the ground. Unless they get what? That certificate. Where's your proof? Where's your debt cert? 
Number two, show me your secret place. On Tuesday night, I was here and I was like, God, I don't think I need to preach again. What, what's number one? Show me your... Show me your cross or your debt, sir. Number two is, show me your secret place. Oh, thank you, Lord. Fiona, do you know that when you die physically, you get your own space? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Louis, as close as you and Katie are, and you love her dearly, she ain't going in the same box as you. Katie said, no, it won't happen. <laughs> but, 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 but church, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's your own secret place. It's just you alone. Now you can't feel anything, but it's just you. Yeah. Number two, show me your secret place. Now that you have died to self, where is your secret place? Where is your secret place? Now, now you remember I said that we can be preaching and we can still um, not be activating the power of Christ. You remember that? Yes, it's because, help me Holy Ghost. Sir. Some who preach have no private ministry. As a matter of fact, Lucy, they have no Psalm 91 experience. He that dwelleth in what? The secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of man. No, under the shadows of the Almighty. If you have no Psalm 91 experience, you have no secret place. Church, church, follow me. You gain access to power by your quiet time with Christ. How much time do you spend with him? Now, uh, I'm talking just you and him. Now, now, we see a widow jump into the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 4. Elisha's instructions were clear. Um, verse 4, it says, and I'm going to read A. Are you with me, my friend? Yeah? Oh, you're there, you... You're getting it. It, 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 says, it. it says, then go outside and keep the door open. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. And after you do that, do what? Pour oil into some of the jars. Into all the jars. And each of them will be half filled. Church. Watch power. Watch power. Um, verse 5 and 6. So that's the instruction. She had to go where? Inside. Right? She had to not just go inside, but she had to do what? Shut the door, meaning her secret place. Go to verse 5. She, she left him, and afterwards she shut the door. In other words, she was no obedient. Oh, Jesus. You see, we, we have gotten instructions, but many of us haven't been obedient. So how is the oil going to flow in your disobedience? You're preaching, apostle. You're preaching. Yes, I, I, I need the church to understand. Now, now listen. They brought the jars to her. And she kept what? Pour. Pour. That is the power. Church. How do you know that is the power? 
Jacob. Because in the early part of, 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 of um, 2 Kings 4, she told the man of God, I had little. I only had a little. In other words, what she had could not fill one jar. But when she went in, I feel the Holy Ghost. When she locked herself inside, when she went into her secret place, the Bible said the oil started to flow. She went outside, she got jars, and the jars were filled. More than one. That is the power because she went where? In her secret place. It got to the point. She says, Bring me another one. Bring me another one. Church, follow me. The prophet didn't tell her to pour the oil once she got the jar. Church, it's oil. It's oil. So it's better to pour it outside. Yeah. Why, Lucy? Because it's going to spill. I don't want to, 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 to have to clean up the spill. So if I pour it outside, it's better. But God says, oh Jesus, in order for you to come on the outside, you need to be on the inside. <clears throat> oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. I, I need a child of God to understand that the, the flow of oil is important, but not just out of your, not just in your public place. In your secret place. It's your personal time with the Lord. It's that personal time that has, get this, substance. Why did I say that? Because many people pass the casino, when they hear personal time, they think, well, I do my devotion time. Can I correct someone? I did not say devotion time. I said your secret place time. Oh, Jesus, help me. What do I mean by that? The uninterrupted session of prayer. Oh, God, you, you, you hear the, that first word? Uninterrupted. The uninterrupted session of worship. The uninterrupted session of studying the word. The uninterrupted session of laying on your face. That's your what? Secret place. Uh, I want to show you something before I move on about the secret place. Many people actually turn to 1 Samuel 17 verse 35. Many people believe that David was anointed by Solomon and that's where he got the power. By 1 Samuel 17. 35. First Samuel seventeen thirty five. Okay. Thirty four. Sorry, sorry. Thirty five. Church. This didn't happen in public. Do I have a church that follows me? His brothers never knew about this. His father never knew about this. I'm here to tell the church of God. Many of us, we're looking for, we're look, what we're looking for is pu in public is only available in private. What we are searching for in public is only available where? In private. There was another young man. <coughs> he, he ran from his house because he was full of anger. He was hiding for four decades in the wilderness. But then he had an encounter. See, now, now that encounter did not come when he was with his family. It came when he was alone. <coughs> <coughs> Core, I'm advertising for you. You need to talk to me. I drank this water, Lucy. It's your fault, and it's so good. I started buying it. 
It's really good. So, court. This broadcast is paid for. Hallelujah. Laughter is good for the soul, said the word. Now, now, now follow me. He was alone tending to his father-in-law's sheep. Exodus 3 and 4. That's the location where, where he had a personal encounter. Which young man I'm talking about? I'm talking about Moses. Uh, and, and, and he had a, a secret place encounter. Now this teaches us something, church. Because many times we are so focused on the place. But the focus is not on the place. The focus is are you available? Because his presence is everywhere. The church missed it. Sometimes we believe. That I have to go in my closet for it to be a secret place. But for Moses, it was out in the open. But he was by himself. My God. He was not with his family. He was by himself. Because if he was in his room, Lucy, then he couldn't see a burning bush. So some of us, my God, God has called you to go up to Little Creek. That's the name of the place. And maybe just, that's the name of it, Little, that place up by Dallas. Hillside, thank you very much. By hillside, right? And just sit by the, the stream of water. Some of you, God might call you to go sit in the park. But in your mind, God, there's so many people. Can I tell you, God will meet you wherever he sends you. But you have to know the place. Ah, I hear the Holy Ghost. For Moses, it was not in his closet. For Moses, it was in the wilderness. Ah, and he was served serving man oh god but though he was serving man god knew him and god came and gave him an encounter where is your secret place where is your secret place church where is your power now 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 watch this moses was having a one-on-one -on -one with god Oh God, I'm scared. Who can identify with Moses? Oh God, I don't know how to talk. Oh God, I'm nervous. God, are you sure it's me? Can I call Katie's name? God, you're sure it's me, you said? Oh Jesus, I'm going to stop picking on people today. Anybody ever been there? I know I have been there. What, 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 uh, God, um, there are so many apostles. I should speak. Yes, but God, that one has a doctorate. That one has a master's. Uh, well, I didn't call them to speak. Uh, I called you to speak. Why? Because what you're coming with is from the word of God. When God calls you, it doesn't matter who you are around. My God, uh, all you have to do is to make yourself what? Available. Watch Paul, Exodus 4. Help me, Fiona. Exodus 4, read 1 to 7. I know time has gone, but please, just give me some time. Stop right there. <laughs> this is the question God asks in many of us. What is in your hand? Church. I need to say this. This encounter is in a secret place. There is no one else there. It's just God and Moses. And he's having that conversation with him. And now he asks him, what is in your hand? Continue there. Stop right there. Can, can anybody just perform that? No. But I'm going to show you something. Evil people can perform it. Because most um, Pharaoh's magician did. But we all know what happened. Oh Jesus, I'm going into next week from now. I'm not going to say it. 
Remember the point. Because next week we'll, we'll hit it. Because that's the third secret place that we'll go into next week. Co continue to read. Continue to read, please. Now, thanks. I want each and every one of you to pause and think about you being Moses. <laughs> That's the answer I'm looking for. That's us. <laughs> he had a staff in his hand. God just threw it down. It became a snake. We would have run. <laughs> Can I tell you how many times we have missed the power of God because we become scared? People, it's not a snake. It's a staff. It's a stick. It's not a snake. God turned it into a snake. So God can turn it back into a stick. We don't stop to think that. We say the devil is a liar. And now we think of Adam and Eve. Oh, if it's a snake, it means there was a snake in the Garden of Eden. So it must be evil. <laughs> Do you see how many times we miss God? Because we put him in a box. Continue to read. <coughs> God wasn't finished. How many of us would want to get a, a chopper to cut off our hand right there? Oh! <laughs> but it's your hand. You don't have any skin disease. But miracles, God will perform whatever one does he choose. So that he will be glorified. Let's leave it right there. The power of God is birthed from your secret place. Now the truth is, I can list many men and women of God in the Old Testament to prove my point. But let's wrap this up in Jesus' name. Amen? Acts chapter 3. Now this comes, this experience comes after the upper room experience. Now, I need you all to listen to me. Because this blew my mind. Maybe you already knew it. But this blew my mind. How many of you knew that the upper room experience with the Holy Spirit was a secret place encounter? See, you are all bright. I'm just learning it last night. Acts 1. It, it, it lists the names of the disciples present. Men and women of God who knew what quiet time and personal time with Jesus was. They walked with him, so they developed their own personal time to honor him and to seek guidance from him. Now, after seeing him ascend, they were ready for the next level. They gathered, listen to this. With like-minded people. They gathered with like-minded people. Not just any and anyone. Church, follow me. There are levels of the secret place. Level one, you and Jesus. Level two, you and the fellowship. With the, the fellowship of those with like mind and Jesus. This is level two. But you cannot, Alex, 
go to level two without completing level one. So there are many people who want to experience Holy Ghost moment in church with believers who are already living in a Christ dwelling place. I'm going to repeat it because I think it flew over your head. There are many people in church who want to experience Holy Ghost movement in their life because there are other believers who are living in Christ's dwelling place. Listen, listen. The people in Acts chapter 1 and 2 were all on one accord. Can I, can I say this to someone? Go find your place in level 1 and stop expecting to find power in my encounter. Go find your place in level one and stop expecting to find power in my level two. When you are constantly or consistently in prayer, worship, then, oh Jesus. Lord, help me. I, I need to wrap this up. Church, when you are consistently in private worship, then the public worship lack of won't affect you. Why? Because when the public worship seems to affect you, all you need to do is to take yourself into your already consistent private worship. Though you're in a public space. But if you have never experienced level one. This is what you're going to say. The music is too loud. The keyboard threw me off. The tune that they were singing, I don't know that song. So that's not how I like it. Could it be though? Could it be you felt trapped because you have no secret place to turn to? Could it be there's no way to escape? So the only focus is someone else. I have, I have seen we are in church here, whether it's one of the Tuesday night or here. And it could be Sister Marv or Sister Lucy starts a song that none of us knows. And it sounds completely different. And you might not even understand what it's saying at first. But you just pause. And you listen. And then you get What's that song Amavi raised this morning? Do something, Do something new. I can't sing, so. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do you really want that? Something new. It's it's simple. It doesn't even need any keyboard. But you can't sing something new in level two unless you got something new in level one. You see, there are some will come into an experience of level two. Do something new in my life. No, not that voice though, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and you see Lucy spreading out. You see Amavi spreading out. You see Pastor Cat spreading out. And you are standing there. But, but God, I'm singing it too. You've got to step back. 
Go into your secret place first. If you were listening before, you cannot say you need to go home. Because Moses' secret place was out in public. Yes. My God. Yes. God, you're good. Yes. Yes. So you might just need to find a corner. Mm -hmm. And as you go in that corner, he said, Lord, I want to encounter what they are encountering. Because I can see the light, but I can't step in. My God. Uh, but God, here I am in the secret place of the Most High. God, will you touch me? But if God sees sin in your life, he's going to say repent. So I can move you to level one. Somebody thought I was going to say level two. No. Oh, Jesus, remember you're in, you are in your secret place, but you're still, at, you're still not at level one. Oh God, this is good. You are in your secret place, but still not at level one. You are still at a place where you need to say, God, I am sorry. I have sinned against man. I have sinned against you. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the Bible tells us in Luke 15 that the father will come running. It won't be long that you experience level one. Now as you feel that move, it might be something in your stomach. I don't know. It might just be a presence. It might just be the radiance of God. You know then what you do? You join. Fiona said something on Thursday night when I came on. Many of us, we have gone to level one and we have encountered God. But we haven't forgiven ourselves. So we are trapped in level one. Level one is a good place. Yeah. But we are trapped there. Why? Because we haven't looked past what we have done. When God has already said, you are forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us keep going back to what we have done? Oh Lord, forgive me. And I, I just see, I have a weird imagination. I see God just saying, my daughter, I have forgiven you. You are set free. But he says something, and he said it to um, the man who he healed. Don't do it again. When, he, when you get those words, you are released, go and sin no more. Alex, you step from level one. And you join. Because level two is with like-minded people. Yes. Level two, you're not by yourself. Oh, Jesus. Level one, you're by yourself. But level two is with the saints. So if you tell me you don't need to come to church to experience God, you and I have a problem. Because you're still at level one. <laughs> you're still at level one so you won't graduate oh I can find God in my secret place yes but there's another level that he has for you and that's why there's some things that you can't achieve because you're still in your house at level one but God said to the disciples join me where in the upper room don't join me on the lower floor. Because what I'm about to bring, it comes with power, my God. It comes with authority. Not the lower deck. You have to uh, climb the ladder. You have to leave, le mighty God. You have to leave level one and come to level two so you can experience what? My power and my glory. Amen. Everybody stand, please. <coughs> Let me show you something. 
Acts chapter 3. Put verse 4. We're going to read from verse 4 to 6. Acts chapter 3. I'm closing. Right there. That's power. That's power. You know when that came? After level two. After level two. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I know you're standing, but please bear with me. If we go back in scripture, you remember when Jesus sent out the disciples? And a man came back and said, Jesus, <laughs> they couldn't heal my son. And you remember what Jesus said to them? <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. They were in level one. Church. They had, they had personal encounter with Jesus. But there were some things that they couldn't do. Until they graduated to level two. When they graduated, Peter could say, Silver or gold? I have none. But get up. Rise up. And walk. Rise up. And walk. Because that's what I have. This is how I'm going to close. Acts 9. And you're going to read from verse 32 to 42. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, 32, 42. Somebody say, watch power. power. 34. Hold on, hold on. He was healed when? Okay, he was healed when? Okay. Now, this, listen. Everything I would, I have said would mean nothing if you miss verse 35. Then the whole population of Lydda and Sharon saw Aeneas walking around and they turned to the Lord. That's it. Every power that we're talking about, if it doesn't lead to God, then it's man's power. It's man's power. Continue, Fee. Stop right there. Somebody say, watch power. Watch power. 39. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats of other clothes Dorcas had made for them. Fiona, I want you to walk, verse 40. Stop right there. Church. <laughs> Jesus. Peter knew level one. He came to level two. But for some certain, for certain healing, he had to go back to level one. Though they were widows, but their focus was not healing. Their focus was on burying her. Oh God, oh Jesus, you will come into a 
place sometimes where others are supposed to be like mind but because mighty God your level one and two experience have you have seen God you understand that your focus is different It's not nothing wrong with the widows. Mm -hmm. Please don't miss it. Because Amavi, many times we will say, there's something wrong with that sister. That is why the miracle can't happen. No. It's, it's, It's about you. It's about the level you are at. You can't operate on their level, Lucy. Because God has already elevated you. Have you ever tried to keep company, Fiona, with some people? Oh, Jesus. Have you ever tried to? Oh, oh, let us continue. But it doesn't matter how you try. Uh, I heard a friend of mine, uh, um, I think it was Nadia. She said, it seemed like she changed. But I said, no, she hasn't changed. You have changed. When you have, oh God, when you have changed, you can't stay with certain people. You might have experienced level one and you came to level two, but for Peter, he had to go back to level one. Why? Because there was a presence. There was a presence in his level one that the widows could not encounter. Because in that moment, they were mourning. And it was okay to mourn. It was okay for them to want to remember the woman of God. But God had other plans. Jesus had other plans. Somebody say, watch power. Watch power. Finish finish the reading, please. Fiona, you got it, because I heard the then. Mm-hmm. Then. And he presented her to them alive. In other words, church, after oh, you have gone back to your level, t- level one, you still have to come back to the people in level two. You have encountered level two. God took you to level one because you are actually higher than level two. But I can't say that because that's next week. So I'm trying to cut it differently. Oh, Jesus. I know you get it. But God had to take you back to level one. Now, when you have fulfilled what he says, now you have a responsibility to those in level two. God to show them that there is I understand you are mourning but there is more to it there is more to the God that we serve now when they when he returned her to level two look what happened many believed in Peter many believed in apostle Many believed in KB. Many believed in the Lord. Many believed in the Lord. Church. The power, the power that we gain only leads to Jesus. Not secondary or first or third. Only leads to Jesus. Where is your power? Are you dead or are you alive? Are you so eager for public without private ministry? See you next week, God's willing. Every head bow, every eye close. Do something new, please. That's the prayer. That's how we're going to close. Can you just raise your hand, please? We're, we're requesting the power. 